roll call 219 here and we just got back from the grocery store and i seen that there's halloween costumes and people wearing sweaters and sweatshirts so that means it's hunting season so over the last few years i've been making some hunting videos they're down on the channel uh haven't had a whole lot of luck here and there uh hit or miss tuesday nights nine o'clock uh but i'm hoping this year with the prospects that i've scouted uh, throughout the spring into the summer and now here into the fall that something will materialize and fill the freezer again like i said we were at the grocery store and i looked at prices of things and they have increased they've increased in my area i live in northwest indiana i don't know where you are so i don't quite know the temperature uh that you're sitting at with uh food or whatnot but i did notice a lot of signs that said uh we're having trouble uh shipping stuff or having trouble uh, with things showing up on our docks, uh, the, the, the whole spiel. Uh, so that's concerning and it's alarming. Not only that, prices for beef has jumped through the roof uh, to the point where I'm like, good thing we know people that own a farm, you know, uh, in, in the family. Uh, Cindy's brother, it was handed down from generation to generation. Now he's ended up with it. So it's always been a plus and we've always had an opportunity to get food or to maintain animals on that property at one point so we can have food food in the future. Uh, so hunting's been uh, a real, uh, a big aspect of my life nowadays, uh, especially as I gotten older. Uh, I was out of hunting for a long time, just other things in the world that I was doing. And now that I've been back into it for quite some time, I really enjoy it. Uh, if I could quit my job and be a professional hunter, I would do it. Even though there's no money into it, uh, it still gives me a peace of mind and a sense of uh, uh, I'm still doing a, a part for the country as in conservation and uh, getting the younger generation outside and doing uh, outside activities. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I can't do that. And <laughs> unless you're Steve right now, it doesn't really pay well. Uh, but I have some prospects that I'll throw here on the on the 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 video that i've been looking at uh, for quite some time especially the deer prospects uh but i i had some information that i put on the show wednesday night rants and raves uh, 9 30 10 ish whenever my internet wants to work uh that was really beneficial uh i mean if you guys don't know i'm not a big government person for all the people that are new to the channel i'm not a huge government person and i believe that we as citizens of this country can maintain uh, a level without the government always sticking their hands in our pockets or in our or looking at our lives, uh, whether it's through the internet or just being nosy in general. And I think it's really up to hunters nowadays uh, to be more of a, a conservationist and to really take care of the environments uh, that are here uh, on this earth for us to enjoy. Uh, so I released some information to my local DNR about turkeys. Uh, turkey season is going to intertwine with deer season this year, uh, which is a, a, a double doozy to fill the freezer. <laughs> Whether you get a turkey or a deer, uh, you're, you're going to probably be uh, in, a, in a good spot. So turkey clutches, that's what they call groups of turkeys that are born, uh, they have been popping up everywhere this year. Uh, the information that the DNR received was more information that they've received in handfuls of years uh up to 300 percent more of information uh that they've they've gathered from hunters uh giving them that information now <laughs> with government bureaucracies it's not always uh <laughs> great when they get information as we've seen uh, in history in and in past instances but hopefully this will open up their eyes that hunters are now willing to really help them uh in, in determining uh, certain aspects of of seasons uh, <laughs> we can always wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which one fills up faster uh, but hopefully they're getting the gist that uh, more and more people are getting into hunting uh, especially the younger generation and it's going to be beneficial it's going to be beneficial for everyone that shares information i've always said it when it breaks man we're in the dark when we don't share information at least with each other uh, <laughs> not so much with government agencies uh, but uh, they they have had a huge outpour of information about these turkey clutches that have popped up all over my area here in northwest in Indiana. Uh, so much that uh, they're astounded by it. 
Uh, at one point, I had three different groups of turkey clutches that were walking around uh, doing their turkey thing. Uh, I'll put some pictures up here uh, of some of the turkeys uh, that I've seen, uh, not only uh, throughout the summer or throughout the spring into the summer until now, that it's going to be really beneficial. And what I mean by that by hunters is maybe this will open up these people's eyes to maybe extend the season or extend a bag limit. Uh, on certain game animals. I mean, that would help out a lot because there are restrictions when you're a hunter on how many animals you can harvest uh, during certain seasons. Uh, again, I'm wishful thinking here uh, just due to the way the government works, but I think it may be beneficial if we start showing these people uh, a lot of information and we start taking hold of it. Uh, again, you know, wishful thinking, but I think in the end, it'll help out future generations and future populations of these animals if we continue to share information, at least with other hunters, and really tell, you know, bureaucracies and, and governments that, look, uh, we can maintain this. We can do this. We don't always need you guys to be, you know, looking over our shoulder. Um, that's one of the things I hope the younger generation starts to understand and they start opening up themselves to is about speaking up and speaking out and, and being a viable source of information. Uh, it's yet to be, it's yet to be seen, but I think it's, it's beneficial. Uh, I have a guy on my hit list that, uh, I guess Cindy was out on the porch, uh, this morning, uh, doing her routine and, uh, she heard a gobble. And if you're a, a mainstream turkey hunter, you know, when you start hearing a little bit of gobbling, uh, the blood starts pumping through the veins and your heart starts going a little bit faster. Uh, and that's just the way that turkey hunting is. I mean, I've, I've done it, uh, for the last few years now and I'm addicted to it. Uh, and it, and it's, it's just a thrill. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I'll be able to get this guy and, and uh, put him in my freezer. But, uh, the, the, the benefit of that again is looking at what I seen today in a grocery store and being more self-reliant and being able to hunt uh, is going to help my family. It's really going to help me. It's going to help me uh, take care of uh, nature uh, more than what I used to do in, in the past. So hopefully that's another thing I can teach my kids uh, as they start getting older and, you know, I'll be sitting in my chair because I can't move a whole lot because I'm all old and gray. So, uh, the thing that comes with that is, and the other side of the spectrum is really going to push back on it, but it's the constant maintaining of it. Uh, it's great to see all these new birds, uh, you know, being born and being a part of nature, but that also comes at a cost and the cost is predators. And I'll throw this one up here. Um, I've got, I've had this guy, I've seen him now. Uh, my daughter's seen him and uh, you know, foxes, Foxes are, are some slick creatures, man. Uh, they're hard to catch, and when you do catch them, uh, it's going to be beneficial for you because they, they're they almost in the same realm as coyotes. A lot of people uh, are talking about coyotes here in the past, past few years, especially in the Chicagoland area where we've seen these coyotes get so aggressive that they've snatched small dogs and they've, always, they've already bit children and adults. Uh, when that starts to happen, you're going to have to really thin out that population. You're really going to have to get rid of these animals. Uh, coyotes are the same way um, here. Uh, they will decimate everything until there is nothing left. Whether it's rabbits, squirrels, small dogs, chickens, it does not matter. And, and I was on the porch the other night and I heard some, some howling off in the distance. And then all of a sudden on the other side of me, uh, it was really close. It, the whole neighborhood lit up with howling. Uh, they're around the area and they're around this area just due to the fawns being born, the, the deer, the deer fawns being born, and now this uptick in turkey population. Uh, so that's really going to bring out predators uh, and, and really get them going. And I think it's a, it's a balancing act with predators and then uh, the animals that we used to uh, we use to harvest and put in our free freezers. Uh, and if we don't do it as hunters and we don't uh, show the information and show the benefits of it, 
guess who will do it? And it's the government. The government always steps in. And that's something I, I, I despise. And I think we can do it. I think we can do it as Americans. And I think we can do it as hunters to balance uh, the things that come along with hunting. Uh, so the next generation uh, can be uh, set in those ways and continue the, the tradition of going out in the woods and enjoying nature. Um, a lot of people on the other side aren't going to understand that, but that's just the way it works. If, if we if we can get populations up, we're going to have to balance the predators uh, that feed off of it. it. It's just it's just that dynamic. And if we don't, then we have instances of of you know dogs being taken, children being bitten. Uh, I've had a couple close calls with raccoons. Uh, last year and even this year, uh, I call them hordes of raccoons. At one point, uh, I, I was going around a corner and it, I'm telling you, up to 13 to 14 raccoons just come scurrying out of nowhere. Uh, and they were really detrimental to uh, to what we have here uh, on the homestead. I mean, attacking chickens, uh, encounters with the dogs. I mean, El Chapo ain't getting no older. He's getting long in the tooth and... He kind of forgets about his knife, so he kind of goes out there unprotected. Uh, so uh, these interactions are something that I try and keep from having. Uh, and I've trapped raccoons for all, all the PETA people. I've trapped raccoons, and I've gone out, and I've let them go. I even had a guy come here and pick them up every time I got them. At one point, I was catching uh, four to five raccoons a day. That's a lot. And it didn't matter if they were juveniles or, or, or adults. They were just, they were so rampant. They cost me about $130 in damages. Uh, and not only that, I lost, uh, I lost geese and I lost chickens to it. Uh, and I depend on the, on these, on these animals to feed my family. And that's where the balancing act comes in that, that I talked about. So I'm happy about the population, but I'm not too happy about some of the predators that that, that come around. I have no problem in shoo them away and they'll, they'll go somewhere else. Uh, but when they become a real nuisance, uh, that's when, uh, things have to change. It's it just, it's just that way to, to, to sustain, uh, some self-reliance here. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stay out of the grocery stores. I'm trying to stay away from, you know, you know, things like that. And the encounters that the supermarkets give you nowadays aren't pleasant. So with all that being said, deer season. Deer season is is a time that I really cherish because uh, deer hunting, uh, I've seen it before where people go out and they get a deer on their first chance, uh, but sometimes it doesn't happen like that. But yet I create a bonding experience with my son and I and we talk about things. Uh, we talk about things in his life. We talk about things in my life. It's a bonding experience. And then with the experience of enjoying a great meal, if we're successful, that's a, that's the icing on the cake. Uh, this year I have two prospects and I'll put them up here. Uh, these, these two, these two deer for some reason are almost inseparable. Uh, I think that will change down the line here as we get further into uh, fall, into winter, uh, and especially deer season. Uh, but these deer have been with each other for quite some time. I've caught them in multiple spots at, mul at any given point in time, whether it's the morning, whether it's the midday, or whether it's at night on my trail cams. Uh, why is that? I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not a biologist. I'm not somebody that has a degree in animal behavior, okay? But I look at this as this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for me to fill fill the freezer. Uh, I experienced it yesterday. Uh, the doe came out looking around for some food and then had two fawns attached to her. And then all of a sudden the buck comes out. So, uh, and this is happening on more than one occasion. Uh, I'll throw some older pictures on here and I believe these are the same deer. I believe for some reason they never grew apart. Usually this time of year, all the little bachelors, all these deer, you know what I'm saying? All the bucks, they're, they're dispersing out. They're, they're kind of sniffing around. They're looking for their, they're looking for their area that they're going to hang out in to get their does and their, and their chicks. Uh, so, this is really odd to see this buck always tied to this doe and I've never seen her without him. Now recently I've had another buck show up. Unfortunately for him, 
he's got an advantage and a disadvantage. And the advantage is he's got a bigger rack than this other deer. The disadvantage, this other deer is way bigger than him. So that tells me that uh, this new deer, this new buck that showed up is older. And from my experience watching some of these spikes in some of these uh, uh, these smaller uh, deer, these bucks that come through the area, they'll get chased off real quick by, by the old schools. I'm talking about the 10 pointers I've caught on camera or the 12 pointers. Uh, this is like deer UFC, you know, it's who's got, who's got the, the most experience at living and, uh, who's got a, a, a pretty tough rack on them. Uh, and I don't think he'll fare well. And if these bigger bucks down the, down the road, uh, get wind of this, uh, this doe that may come back into heat, he's going to have a tough time fending them off and he'll just, he'll drive off somewhere else and maybe he'll come back. Maybe he won't. And again, there's other hunters in the area, you know, and I believe the reason why these deer are surviving at, at that point, you know, years ago is because they were too small, you know, and people would either pass on them or they didn't venture out as, as far, as far as they, uh, normally do. Usually when deer, I've noticed usually when deer, uh, venture out, uh, when they get older, they don't come back until certain points in time. And I've seen it. I've, I've caught deer, uh, on camera that I, that I see for, uh, you know, four or five days. And then I don't see them for almost two weeks and then they show back up. And that's if they're slick enough, not, not to get, uh, get got by another hunter. And it's it's just that way for hunting, but I believe I I call these two Romeo and Juliet. And I'll throw another picture that I threw on Instagram when I was at work because I work retail, so you know that even shortens my window a little bit more during hunting season because I'm not always out there. Uh, but they ran uh, right past my stand uh, that year, and I believe that's the same buck as this one uh, that I just showed you. I I, I see some um, patterns on their fur that are that are on them to, to this to this day so i believe these deer have been in this area for the last few years which is exciting because they're staying around uh one of the things of, that i've learned uh from uh, other hunters uh whether it be really popular hunters or really old school hunters is keeping deer on your property it's hard at times if deer find a food source they're going to stay around that food source. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, uh, uh, sway, uh, too far from it. And they're going to stay there because they know they always have an opportunity to catch a meal. And that's one of the things that I've really been adamant on by food plots, uh, by, uh, adding corn to their diet because there's a lot around here, even to the point of throwing a couple bales of hay or alfalfa out there, uh, because there's alfalfa fields, there's corn fields and there's hay fields in my area. And I believe that's going to be their main diet besides, you know, leaves and all the other things they eat, especially the stuff out of my garden, like my lettuce that they, they, <laughs> they got into. So, uh, giving them a food store, food source will help you keep the deer on your property. You don't want them to go away to, uh, to a different place because they might just stay there. And if that's off your property, that's off your property. There's nothing you can do. Uh, so I have some prospects and I'll throw them back through here on the video. These are the guys I'm going to be looking for. Uh, if they show up, I'm definitely going to take them, uh, especially the deer. Uh, I, I have something in mind for these deer after I harvest them uh, that's going to be really cool and it's going to be special to me and it's going to be great and beneficial to my family. Uh, other people on the other side aren't going to think the way I do, uh, but that's that's on them. It's a free country. So I can't wait to, to experience this stuff, not only with, with my kids, uh, but I hope you do as well. And I hope you continue on the tradition of hunting with uh, your family and really open their eyes to conservation and the, the meaning is uh, to constantly be aware of the environment around them. Uh, so it's going to be a great year. I believe it's going to be a great year. Whether I get something or not, I'm still going to have a great experience doing it. And I hope you do as well. I like to thank all my old and my new subscribers and just the people that zip by. I greatly do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. To everybody that you watch on YouTube, it helps with the algorithms. And like always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one, and happy hunting.